What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the PT Coffee Cast, brought to you by The Movement. My name is Dalton, and alongside me today is my beautifully bearded friend, William. William, how are we doing today? I'm doing good, you know? Like, I feel like we have the right amount of distance between us. You know, last time I felt like it was a little intense, you know? But I feel a little bit better, a little more comfortable. Yeah, we were, we were extremely intimate last time we recorded yeah. in this spot, <clears throat> and now I feel... About right. Yeah. Your knee's not touching my knee yet. <laughs> so that's exactly. good. Like last time we had like kneecap to knee, like a little patella, patella to patella action going on. <laughs> patella to patella. <laughs> Max. <laughs> um, guys, thanks so much for tuning in. We're super excited to dive into another episode. But before we do that, um, got a couple things to cover. One, our mentorship um, applications are out and live. So if you guys are watching this, um, you can apply through the link in our bio um, on Instagram or through the show notes. Um, if the application's still there, we are going to be taking people. So hopefully we can get that full first cohort filled up. And then if you still are interested in joining, um, you can get onto the wait list for you know, future cohorts. But we're super stoked about finally getting that out, getting people onboarded, doing some calls with um, potential mentees. It's been super exciting for us to, to get that out. So um, check that out if you're interested. Um, if you want to learn a little bit more about the mentorship, you can check out episode 199 where we cover um, what the mentorship is all about. If you aren't subscribed to the podcast, make sure you subscribe on your podcast platform. Um, and if you aren't if you aren't watching us on YouTube, you can. If you want to see our faces and how close we like to sit to each other, um, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel and watch the full video episodes um, there. And don't forget to follow us on Instagram at PT Coffee Cast. Think that covered us up? Wow. I think that covers it all. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Yeah, it's been uh, it's been an early morning for you, man. Yeah, you know, uh, earlier than normal for sure. We uh, we got a little brainstorming sesh, which is good. We don't always get that opportunity, but I think we're gonna try to do it a little more. Yeah, I don't tend to see Will's face at seven thirty a.m. Um, so today was one of those days, which kind of threw me off a little bit. I'm not used to you that early. Yeah, you saw me with pre-coffee too just dangerous it is dangerous now you got one this is your second one yeah. i'm good now i'm in a good place yeah you seem much better yeah do i well that's good yeah i think we should get into the episode though let's do it um so today what we want to talk about is some of our favorite questions to ask clients um, will and i were walking back from our brainstorming session thinking about what we want to talk on the podcast um about and he brought up this wonderful idea and i thought that is a great idea we should do that so here we are that's exactly what went down so yeah, yeah i'm pumped i'm pumped about this because i think there's like a little superpower in the way that you ask questions and what questions you ask i definitely think there is a superpower i definitely think there's a skill to it um i definitely think it's something that i'm continuing to learn more and more about and how to best position questions and when to ask them and um, being more strategic with those things I think um, those are all skills you can you can build um, and I've learned a lot of that from our guy Nick Hanna shout out to him um, but uh, today is all about some of the questions we like to ask so do you want to kick it off or do you want me to kick it off hmm. that's the real question I want to kick it off <laughs> okay I'm ready to go all right well Let's hear let's hear one of your favorite questions that you like to ask clients. All right. And I'm going to lead you in with a drum roll. Let's do it. Okay. Here we go. And Will's question is, what did you think about that exercise? <laughs> oh, very good. Elaborate. All right. So I think... You know, something that I was just noticing, and this is a recent thing I've been doing, actually, but we always ask, how did you feel? You know, like, how did you feel about that? Uh, did you have discomfort? And I think those are great questions, but I just noticed that I was asking the same one a lot, you know? And so what I did was I just changed it very slightly and said, what do you think instead of what do you feel? And 
the reason I, I tried doing that was I was wondering if that would lead to some discussions around like thought processes and uh, lead to some discoveries of like, you know, maybe some some problem solving or, or things like that. And it's it's a very open ended question, but it also forces them to think about it because I'm saying what do you think, you know, versus like, um, versus like asking it in a closed way, mm -hmm. like, uh, you know, um, did you think that exercise went well? Yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, thanks. Thanks for that. Yeah. And the, what mm -hmm. do you think insinuates that they have a thought Yes. on it? Cause they're for sure going to, unless they're completely just going through the motions, right? Yeah. Like most people have thoughts on things, but they don't necessarily want to share them because for many reasons. So I think like the, what do you think about this is a good way to do it because it insinuates that they have thoughts, which is more likely for them to share. Gets them like actively <clears throat> engaged in the session too. And I found like sometimes when you ask, what do you feel like a lot of the times it's sort of implied because you're in a physio session that it's like, well, not much pain or mm -hmm. a little bit of pain. And I just wasn't getting a lot from that. Whereas mm -hmm. like, what do you think you get into more of like the cognitions and I started like, and thought processes and I started getting more like tangible things that we could work together on. Could you like give me a little bit more of an example of like some of that stuff that you pulled out that you felt was tangible by asking that question? Yeah. It'd be things like one, just kind of confirming that something seemed really, uh, to be effective based on what we were working on. You know, people would be like, I think this is, really going to help my problem, you know, is like a response I would get, which is just like, okay, great. Well, now we know, right. Let's, let's double down on that type of approach. Yeah. You could even elaborate on that and be like, well, what do you, why do you think this will be helpful to your problem? 100% and great then, follow up. And then that can have them start to, what I find is they start to give their thought process on how things are going. And I'm always hoping in those situations that they're, um, saying things that we've been trying to educate them on, you know, for example, like, well, like, well, I feel that this exercise is going to make me, my knee stronger, but it's not going to impact like the damage of my knee or something like that. I'm just giving like an example off the top of my head, but that can have them express what they've been learning or give you an idea of just where they, where they sit on that thought. Cause maybe they say something that doesn't necessarily align with like what you try to educate them on, but you just get an understanding of how they're viewing the situation, which I think is valuable. A hundred percent. And it all also can lead to like, um, a discovery of like, Hmm, I think this is a good exercise. I'm unsure about how it fits into my goal, you know? And like, even if you explained it before, like it, this is complicated stuff for people. They don't, understand what we do mm -hmm. you know so like it that prompts like okay well instead of just moving on to the other exercise like we need to we need to clarify right why this is relevant to their goal yeah i can also bring up any fear around like i've had people oh they go i see how this exercise could be helpful but i'm very worried that it's going to lead to my back flaring up more or her being hurt more because of x and then that again just gives you more info on how you might address that it might it opens up conversation to talk about more about why they feel that they're fearful of that or what makes them think that it's going to make them worse which just gives you more information on how you can manage that situation which i feel is better to take the time to do that than rush on to another exercise. It's almost like these thoughts represent like barriers and resistance, you know, to like having success. And by asking those questions and identifying the, what those thoughts are, you're sort of just slowly peeling away that resistance and you're leading to a more likely chance of that being successful and for them to be on board. Mm -hmm. <laughs> have you ever gotten, have you ever gotten a response where, you're like, well, what do you think about that exercise? And they're just like, it was good. Totally. Yeah. A hundred percent. Some people just aren't that engaged. And, you know, sometimes I'll ask about that. You know, sometimes I just leave it alone. I think you gotta, yeah. that's, that's part of the art, you know? I feel, I feel if I have 
developed a decent enough relationship like if it's not the first time that maybe it's not the initial assessment but it's like a couple times we've seen each other and they'll give me that response I might dig a little bit more and be like well what did you think was good about it you know and try to get a little bit more but sometimes people don't have an actual answer or they don't want to share and that's cool yeah at least you kind of know where they're at yeah (laughs) or maybe it is maybe they just think it's good this is good i'm cool with it and like think about these questions is like what works really well for some people might not for others so like it's not a be all end all but it's a way you can try to get some good discussion going that's valuable for what you're trying to build um but you know you might have to try different questions that's why there's more than one Mm -hmm. totally option yeah right yeah (laughs) It is. Which, you know, maybe we should find out what you've got in the tank. I have something. Want me to lead you in? You can lead me in, but it's going to be underwhelming because it's a <laughs> classic Dalton. It's a long-winded, like, question. Oh, uh, man. Not long-winded, but there's some setup to it. Well. But you can lead me in. Lead are me you in. sure? Yeah, yeah, lead me in. You, Go ahead. you didn't really hype that up Sorry, very much. Le- <laughs> just, just lead me in, and then I'll lay it okay. out. Okay. Let's do it. Ready? <laughs> and my question is, <laughs> on a scale of 0 to 10, 0 being I've, you've made no progress, you feel like you're exactly where you are, uh, where you were when you started, you know, you're still in pain, you're not feeling confident, and 10 being you've absolutely crushed your rehab, you feel like you're accomplishing everything that you wanted to accomplish, um, and you're ready to go and get back to crushing life. Where would you fall on that scale? Boom. Is my question. That one question that I like to ask, um, obviously give a little more context around like why and the strategy behind that, but most of the time this is like something that I'll ask people at like our midpoint like check-in assessment that we have um someone that's kind of moving through their plan maybe they're halfway through their plan um and making progress and moving forward um i like to ask that question to get some insight into where they think they're at um and you can pull a lot out of their response um so for example you know and i i like to try and make it very extremes like almost comically extreme of like zero being you're worse than you were before you haven't made any progress or because most people have at that point made some progress and then exaggerate the 10 out of 10 being like have some fun with it kind of make it funny is what I try to do Um, and then oftentimes people will give they're going to give what they how they feel so you know most of the time I'll get like a seven or an eight but sometimes I'll get like a four or five it obviously depends on where they're at but I find that that answer gives me insight into where they think they are and if they're where they think they are is in reality to where they actually are in the rehab um, prog- um, in the rehab progression. So for example, if someone says, oh yeah, I feel like I'm eight out of 10 on that scale. And in my mind from a rehab progression, they're only at a four. Well, now I'm intrigued. Like, why do they feel that way? What's why is there a difference between how they see themselves and how I see them? How how I see where they are, right? Um, or vice versa can happen. They can be like, mm, I feel like I'm a four out of ten, and in my mind, based off what they've told me and where they're going from a rehab standpoint, I feel like they're more of an eight out of ten. Well, I'm intrigued. Why do you feel like you're only a four out of ten? Or wh- where's that mismatch coming from? So that's one piece that I find it, it gives you some insight on. The other thing I like to ask as a question off of that is if someone says, yeah, I'm eight out of 10 and I agree with that. Like, I feel like that's an accurate representation based off of my understanding of the rehab. I will then like to ask, that's great. I totally agree with that. I think you've done X, Y, and Z that's led you to be to that point in the rehab process. Now, let me ask you this. What would make you get to that 10 out of 10? And I like to say, what would you like to experience or what would you like to feel in order to be at that 10 out of 10? Which those are intentional words. Like what do they want to experience and feel? Because most people, like that's what you're really looking for. You're looking for how do you experience things and how are you feeling while you're doing them versus like what 
you know, what would make you be 10 out of 10 type thing is kind of how I try to position it. And that just gives me insight into what else they think they need to work on. So for example, they might be like, yeah, I think, you know, in order for me to, you know, get that 10 out of 10 kind of experience or feeling like I need to be able to run, um, my 5k at a 430 kilometer pace and I'm just not there yet. Or I need to feel more confident going into work, um, to, you know, package these boxes and I'm just not feeling like I'm there. That gives me an idea of, okay, here's what we need to work on, right. To help them get to their goals. And also it gives me information to use to help them realize that, Hey, we need to continue to work or we may need to extend our time together and use actual problems that they still have and how I can position myself as the solution to help them get to, um, solve that problem. And it can be a good way to continue to get buy-in because it's based off of exactly what they're saying versus you telling them what you think they need. Yeah. And I think, uh, one thing you touched on, uh, there kind of at beginning and then a little bit to the end there was the idea of like alignment because, I think that's one thing that leads to fall off and like just not maybe a a great outcome is like gradually as you go through the process, that alignment getting a little more and a little more mismatched because you maybe aren't coming back to like what that original plan was. And it's sort of just, yeah, there's, there's distance between you and that person. So I think what that question allows you to do is explore are we still aligned and if not how can we get back to having alignment Mm -hmm. and if we are aligned where else do we need to go to get there right yeah what what's the next stage here Mm -hmm. you know to to get there yeah and i think we always talk about how we're constantly trying to pull that out of clients in every session right you're always trying to manage expectations but sometimes it can be hard when you have some goals that you need to accomplish for that session. You and your client get into a flow and you guys are vibing off each other and that kind of gets lost. Um, maybe this client's having a really tough time and it's just not a, a good time to ask them those questions during those sessions. What I like about that question and the way that you deliver the question and the environment you deliver it in um, gives them the opportunity to really think about it and reflect on it. So I won't do it in the gym space. I won't do it in between an exercise. I'll do it strategically, like in the room, in a quiet space, usually at the start of the session, just to like set the tone for it and get a sense. And, um, I'll deliver it that way because I feel like that just gives them the space to think about it, reflect on it. It's private because it might pull out something that's a little bit deeper or they're a little bit more uncomfortable with sharing potentially. So I think the environment in which you ask the question as well and how you position it can also impact the, the response that you get. The other thing I thought that was really interesting, which I think we should, we should dive into a bit more is that, uh, circumstance where you don't think they're as far along as they think they are, Mm -hmm. you know, because like often I think that's where they might not realize what you can help them with at that stage of the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a tough, it's a weird, it's a, yeah, I guess weird might be the right word. It's a, it's an interesting situation to be in because it's our job to always make sure we're setting people's expectations appropriately. And if that expectation is not in the same spot and they're more think they're way ahead of the game than they are you're right they're thinking like oh maybe i don't need as much help but in your mind clinically you're like you're thinking well yes actually they do need this help to get them to where they want to go just based off our knowledge of how these things progress and where they actually want to get to and so i why i like that question is it just lets me know where they're at so i might not align that expectation right there in the moment but i have an idea in my head like okay now I need to figure out how can I best communicate and best show this client that they're actually not where they think they are and that they need a little bit more, which then becomes a whole nother, a whole nother game. Um, I think in that moment, I'm, I'll start, if that's the case, I'll start questioning them a little bit more as to why they feel like they are where they are and what has indicated them to get to, to making the successes that they view that the, let me rephrase that. Like, 
like um what makes them feel like they've made that much success like what's indicating that to them and then if there's things that i can use objectively to indicate that maybe that's not necessarily the case and that's where the art of how you deliver that becomes a little bit more tricky sometimes it's cool to see you know like that's why i sometimes say like questions are like superpowers right because we just introduced two questions and there's so much in just those two questions Mm -hmm. you know yeah which is why you know we really talk about this with like our team here and why we talk about it in like the in-person mentorships we do and why we talk about it in our mentorship program is that we want people to really think about how they can use these questions to pull the most information out of it and that that conversation that comes out of that discussion which might end up being 15 minutes of your time which if you have a 30 minute session that's half of your time that that is valuable and that is probably way more valuable than giving them three new exercises um, because you feel like you need to give them more exercise and so trying to reframe people's mind around that and that there's value in that as clinicians and we need to feel confident that that is a value yeah that's why i think uh nick's communicate course is so awesome because it's just like you this is such a skill that you use all the time you know like we should practice and think about these things and like how they can you know how they can influence your outcomes too yeah, and, and the key word is practicing them. You know, I've messed up those questions so, so many times and I'll, I'll still do it and feel like I deliver it good and the response I get from the client is like crickets and you're like, well, shit, well, that, that bombed. <laughs> yeah. But like the only way you get better at delivering it in the, in the environment that you deliver it and the strategy that you use to deliver it is by practicing it and messing up. Um, but the power that can come of a, a good, well-timed, strategic question can actually be a game changer for the outcome of the client. 100%. Should we wrap there? Yeah. Let's wrap there. Guys, thanks so much for uh, tuning in. If you want to learn more about some of the things that we talk about in the mentorship or that are in the mentorship itself, make sure you check out episode 199 of the PT Coffee Cast. If you're interested in applying for the mentorship for our first cohort, you can do so in the show notes below or through our bio on Instagram, which is at PT Coffee Cast. It's also in our main page at the Movement PTs. So anywhere we are, you can find it. Um, You can apply there and see if we can get you in for the first cohort. Outside of that, guys, make sure you subscribe to the podcast on your podcast platform. You can check us out on YouTube where you can see our pretty faces um, and watch the full episode in video form. But outside of that, that is all we got for today, guys. As always, stay caffeinated. Peace.